Here we are yet again. It's what book, book reviews. Dude, I can never say it right from the start. <laughs> Always. Dude, that, was, that was a very soft open. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, welcome back. Hey. Hey. This is our ASMR episode. Uh, it's the book reviews back in your life. Uh, with you as always, it's me. I am Viola Davis, and my guest, who is always present as well, is Adam Driver. And we're happy to be here with you yet again mm. to discuss yet another book. Um, before we get to that, how you doing, man? Have you had a lovely day? <laughs> oh yeah, dude, it's been such a good day, man. <laughs> Everything in my life has actually gone really well right now, and um, I'm just Dude. thankful to even. I wasn't even asking here. that sarcastically. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but Dude, that's crazy. I, I wasn't it. even. I wasn't even asking. I wasn't even answering that sarcastically. Dude, I just there's really not a single thing in my life that could be going better. Honestly, like, I can't even think of one. Um, I'm just. I'm just glad to be here, dude. <laughs> you want, if you're not subscribed, you this is gonna be my <laughs> my initial plug. If you're not subscribed, my life may depend on it. So, like, just think about it. I mean, please, literally, please. And if you're someone who's ever actually even read this book and not some bot, please comment uh, anything about this book because I don't know if the people that are watching this know what we're talking about. So, if you're someone who has heard the words "well of ascension" placed together to and know something about it, I mean, tell me one thing you like about it, please. All right, that was my rant. I'm not. Hopefully we I get interaction passion, based off that. Oh yeah, I love this is my passion, work attire. Dude. So I'm looking way different than I normally am. Dude, I'm I'm doing no shave November right now. It's and looking dude, good, man. I can't wait to shave though. It's it's just I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I don't mind it, but it's just I'm you doing no shave too, November dude. <laughs> it's coming in thick. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh um, man. Well, that's cool. So what man. Are we talking Actually, about today, man? speaking of, oh, wait, wait, wait. yeah, keep going. Sorry. Well, just speaking of uh, people watching things on YouTube, I was watching a uh, two to ramble video today about a bunch of they, they're about manga. talking about yeah about manga. Yeah, I'm watching I was like, that too. Good lord, dude! We're gonna have to start reading manga because <laughs> it's not yeah, happening, dude. <laughs> dude. Come on, man. dude. I will say I have read like I think the first ten of One Piece. You like it? You think I, I mean, like dude, it? it's just not the same. I mean, it's all right. Like, I'm not going to like, I mean, it, it was interesting, but I mean, it's essentially like a never for a moment. Right? Is it going to be better than reading? Like, I just, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's not horrible. And I'm sure it does get better. Like, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of great things like because there's some animes that I love. And so I'm sure that the manga is probably better in some ways, because I do believe yeah. that reading will always be better than like whatever adaptations. But I mean, I yeah. like, I enjoy anime themes. Like, there's a lot of anime shows that I've like, man, I because a lot of it's very fantasy like driven. So, if there's yeah. certain fantastical themes that you like, I mean, anime is just a, like we've talked about how like if the cause anything in the Cosmere were to be at adap- like were to have an adaptation, it would need to be anime or animated. Right. So you can just yeah. do so much more in animated shows. So I think some people like who's who've never watched like a real adult animation like show. Mm-hmm. They knock it and they think it's just for kids because it's cartoons. But like yeah. Arcane, like there's so many shows, dude. I mean, I know Arcane's I've never, so good. I've never seen the full like Stormtrooper show, but I mean, I know it has great ratings. Like the shows Clone like Wars, that, I mean, yeah. or Clone that's Wars, good. yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah, dude. And then there's a new one actually called Blue Eyed Blue Eyed Samurai on Netflix. It's pretty sick, dude. I I watched the first episode and I fell asleep. I uh, it did the I I liked the the vibe of it though. So but anyway, I. So, <laughs> Well, I was like dying of like, I was just so tired and I put it on and then it like, it kind of intrigued me. So it woke me up a little bit, but I was just like, and then I don't even remember when I fell asleep, but I watched, I think most of the first episode and it looked yeah, interesting. I mean, that guy it's had really no good. hands and I was like, yeah, that'd probably be me in that world. Um, but yeah, but anyway, anyway, I mean, all that to say, like the guy on the left, I think his name's Richard made a good point. He was just like, like a book tuber naturally. If you're doing just like book reviews, eventually you're going to reach like a cap to where, because he, he, I mean, I don't know like how true this is. I'm sure they know more about it than we do. But like he was saying, I mean, the only people that are going to be watching a book review video are mostly people that have read the book. And then there's going to be another small fraction that like is interested in it just for the sake of it or interested in maybe reading it one day. But once you reach like that 
like that there's just like a cap there's a ceiling on that demographic yeah. that market basically so it was like so the way you're going to get more viewership if you want to continue to grow is by doing different things and he was just saying man it's really big and oh, they dude, talked about huge. like a non-book review video that they did like something cool they just made up i think it was like first lines in a fantasy book like 10 of them or something and they got really good views on it they were just talking about how it's just like i guess the nature of the beast so it'll be interesting yeah. to see but yeah, you know what, man? Yeah. I'm thankful for our like average, you know, 25, 30 views that we're getting in. We just need Me some too, man. comments and some likes. We need some engagement I mean, from the people. If we can get a couple people to comment one character they like in the Well of Ascension and tell me why, and then tell me mm -hmm. one character you don't like and tell me why. Yeah. Like that alone, that'd be huge. Yeah. And just like let us know you know, your politics and what God you worship. And, you know, let's really go crazy in the comments here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down to argue. Let's get it on. I personally, you know? I personally worship Odium. So. I'm a big Odium guy. Um, oh man. You want to know something wild in this? And we'll get into this. Sure. Is I, I literally Googled well of Ascension characters. You know, who's not named like, you know, how Google, like with the AI thing, it'll like present like information, like trying to yeah. guess what you're looking for. Vin is not labeled and there's like 12 characters and she's not one of the characters. Wow. And that was chat GTP or like a Google article. Just, I Googled like, well of a well of Ascension characters. Wow. I guess, yeah. I guess she's really not in it very much. So that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, so, you want to get into it? Yeah, so uh, today we are discussing the second in the Mistborn trilogy, Well of Ascension. Um, All right. This is one of Sanderson's Cosmere. I think this was the first, I guess, installments in the Cosmere universe. Um, and they're obviously from a little while back. We're kind of just now getting caught up. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, non-spoiler, like rating and review, I gave it a five. I, It's hard not giving Sanderson a five. The books are just so engaging. Can't put it down. Yeah. Ending was crazy good. Um, yeah. Everything leading up to it was good. It every time, bro. Every time. So it was, I mean, it was a five for me. Hardcore. I assume the same for you. Yeah. You liked it more than the first book. I did, man. Um, the first well. book, like it's kind of similar to what the way of Kings is now for stormlight. Like not to compare those two first books, but, <laughs> within irrelevant. their series like well it's not i, I wouldn't say yeah, irrelevant I mean, yeah. but it's just way way less stakes and like less going on and less world building obviously even on a smaller scale for this mistborn series but um still great but the second one you know ends up being even better so yeah, yeah. it's got a four hundred and thirty five thousand ratings on the goodreads with a overall 4.38 out of five stars so which weirdly, dude, is a great book. rating, but that's low key a, a bad rating for Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, it is. What's his, what's Words of Radiance like? Four point seven two, I think. Dude, it's something stupid, bro. I feel like almost all a lot of his are over four or five, which is wild because yeah. that's normally like, oh my god, over four or five. Yeah. So, well, I think another person I watched, it might have been Daniel Green. Somebody said that the, I guess at that point in time, whatever, I don't know, or from their perspective, the consensus was that. Well of Ascension was not as good as the Final Empire, but I totally disagree. I think Well of Ascension is much better. Oh, than I the agree Final too. Empire. I, I like um, Vin which is crazy. way more in this book. So if you have yes. like not watched our, if you've read this book and you haven't watched our, we reviewed the first book. So definitely go watch that. We'll link it down below. But I kind of ripped on Vin a little bit, and dude, I I like her way more after this book. I didn't really. Yeah. I was just on the fence. I did not like her after the first book. But I wasn't, like, I was sold on a lot of other characters. But her, I was still, like, I saw potential, but I wasn't, like, all in. Whereas now, like, I mean, she's so much more interesting. I still have, like, some things yeah. that we'll talk about that I, it's not that I don't like, but, I mean, she is just way better after this book. So, I mean, I don't know how yeah. someone could like the other book more than this. Like, I like the first book, but. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I liked Vin in the first book, but I 100% agree there were several moments throughout Well of Ascension where I was like, I like her even more. Like, she's yeah. a better character. Obviously, it's the second book, so there's going to be more development. So, he's just so good at writing, man. So, I mean, again, I like the twist it, like, was bigger in this book. Oh, I mean, there yeah, was a twist dude. in the first book, but, I mean, it's just, that's what's crazy to me. And we talked about, but the way he's able to still 
his bait and switch is just yeah, it gets you every time, bro. Everything what you think you think is gonna happen. Maybe some of those yeah. things will happen, but like the big main thing is just never the big main thing that you think it is. And it's always like yeah. right in front of you and you just never Right. It's just so hard to like to like to find that out before it's I mean spelled out like blankly for you. But yeah. That's what just the so way he that he can do it. The way again, not to specifically say and spoil anything, like the way he works in the bait and switch, as you said, but all of the world building in with just just the way he like incrementally builds like the magic system, the world building, like, you know, the past, yeah. the characters all to a culminating point that happens towards, you know, in the climax of the Sander Lanch, as it's called, is just it's prolific, man. I just can't I can't get enough can't, of it, dude. Yeah, I can't wait for you to read more fantasy. So yeah. you can see that it's I mean, you, you just have more appreciation for like what you're saying that information dumps that he give don't gives don't feel like information dumps, which is right. so tough to do because there's so many times like in other series that I think are really good series where it's like, man, I, of course this one guy, he's your information guy. Like you learn all about the right. world through this one character and that's basically what they're used for. And hit the way he blends his in with say Zed and then the little right. entries before each chapter and things like that. He just sprinkles it in to where you're just getting these different viewpoints. But at the same time, you're like meeting new characters and they're building depth. It's just, I mean, I don't know how he does it, but it really is amazing. Because like you said, you don't even feel like you're, it doesn't feel like a chore of reading a history book to figure out the history of the final empire. You know, yeah, you're just no, slowly learning. He brings, he presents all the information you need, not only when you need it, but in a lot of different ways. Like sometimes there's a little exposition from like a character, but then there's like the epigraphs like that you see in Stormlight and in Mistborn, you know, in Stormlight, there's also the interludes where you'll get like a random character that gives you this little tidbit of information, which you don't really have that in Mistborn, but still it is just dropped and hinted there through those other means. So he's just a master of his craft. Yeah. I mean, and it's, I mean, it's just wild. What do you think is your favorite way of getting world building? Like if you had That's to really rank, like, dude, cause I mm -hmm. honestly, the epigraphs, it might be one of my favorite ways to like learn yeah, slowly about those, something for sure. Where at first it's like, what is going on? Like this means nothing. But then by like yeah. the last chapters, you're like, Oh dude, what? Like, and it's I, just a yeah. small story sprinkled like in a sentence or two. Right. Over 60 I think, chapters. I love that. I don't know if I can say what my favorite is necessarily. I do love like an epigraph style thing like Stormlight. Um, but I also really like, which this can a lot of times is in an epigraph, but specifically I like when not necessarily like a non-consequential or minor character does something, but like, for instance, those interludes when you get a random character in Stormlight, when there's someone who's like, not necessarily one of the people you're like invested in you just kind of either get like a new little development like or a background story of a person and they somehow deliver either from an experience or from a conversation they deliver this piece of world building that you're getting but the characters in the, in the book that you're mostly seeing through the eyes of don't have that information i think that's a really fun way to get world building um yeah anything that's like historical like you know, we'll see this here. You, you see it in Well of Ascension where you're getting like historical texts or something like that is really fun. So I just love it, man. I mean, world building is my favorite thing, you know, in most cases with fantasy, it seems so far. So, yeah, yeah, he's just I he's love so good, good at it, man. I love a good like not refugee, but like final survivor of like a place that's been destroyed mm. that hits you with just like it's always like some a couple sentences it's never like a deep like like a text that they find right where you're learning a lot it's just like you'll learn like one little tidbit that's like wait what y'all are doing what over here right that, yeah. that seems a lot different than what we knew before um yeah. and i like and, when it's subtle dude when it's like not the focus necessarily of what you're being given it's just like a throwaway line seemingly but then you're like yeah. wait what did he say exactly because that seems yeah. like it's really important but he just kind of glossed over it that's always when it's really yeah. subtle like that it can be very intriguing as well so Agreed. that's an interesting question i do love some world Agreed. building but um we'll have to do a tier yeah, list so, i feel I mean, like we could map that out well and like do a fun uh best yeah. ways because there's definitely some ways that suck too so but anyway so, yeah this book is just 
the world building, do you think it's better in this book or worse? Oh yeah, it's better because I mean it's I mean it's hard to say it's worse because I mean he's building more upon yeah. a world you've already gotten some of in the first one. So yeah, I would say, but but I would say as far as like the writing and just the enjoyment, like everything is even better than the first one. Um, which is crazy to think because you and I both obviously really really liked Kelsier. Um, and as yeah, you dude, know, I, and that was a worry. Yeah, and like if you're if you haven't read the first book, you need to stop watching this regardless. Yeah. Um, cause it's a huge spoiler, but you know, he obviously dies in the final empire. And so you're, you know, I kind of had a concern going into him like, man, he was like, you know, really dynamic, interesting character to read, um, about, but honestly, dude, you do not feel the loss in my opinion. No. You do not feel that. It loss. is because of a big step up from a, a character that was also yes. still my favorite in like one of my favorites. In yeah. The, the from first book. So yeah. him stepping up and taking like way more page time. I loved. Yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, again, just if you haven't read the, the first one, Final Empire, obviously you need to read that first. If you've somehow read the first one and you're watching this and you haven't read the second one, definitely read it. Um, get into this series if you're not. I mean, it's just, again, we've reviewed a lot of Brandon Sanderson stuff, and so you know I don't want to like constantly repeat myself, but at the same time, maybe you haven't seen those videos. You probably haven't. He's amazing. He's a, he's a master of world building. His character development is pristine i haven't read a lot of fantasies so like i feel like all my opinions are kind of novice opinions um but i mean his a goat, man. switch is just incredible yeah man the switch ups you get at the end of most of his books are just i mean they deliver the every roots, time the way he roots them all in world building is what's so special yeah. you're like discovering a lot the world of people with the characters yeah dude a lot of people and I've just read other fantasy series where it's like, oh wait, man, that character is the one that's, you know, you know, double crossing or or whatever. But it's not. Yeah. I mean, it, it's still a good switch, and you know, it's a surprise. But it doesn't, like, it doesn't have the gravity of like, oh wait, all, all the rules of what we thought we knew is just, you know, it, it's like reading Stormlight and figuring out what shard blades are, which right. is a spoiler for anyone or almost a spoiler. It's just, you know. It's just those little things that just they build. They're building. They're yeah. switching baits that build, which is tough to yeah. do because sometimes it's a switching bait where a character you thought was loyal is actually working for the other side, but then you don't really build on that. Now that character is just an enemy, and so right. you know what I mean. Whereas his are just. Yeah. I mean, it's just. It's. I don't. It's so crazy how he does it. He's just so creative. So. And what's yeah, crazy can't. about it is, in most cases, and I can't think of each one specifically, but I feel pretty confident in saying that in most cases, even without the bait and switch or the twist or whatever at the end, it still would have ended up being like a five-star yeah. rating book and, a, and amazing in every way. Like, I wouldn't have had any complaints. But then that surprise gets thrown in, and it's just like, you know, I have no more stars to give. You know what I mean? Yeah, <clears throat> That's no, how I, I feel know. after reading the Sanderson book. I don't I have literally... enough stars to give. Yeah, I mean, I could have done without the last chapter, and I was like, "That was a great book." Yeah, for you sure. Know? Every time, I mean, the last chapter. Like, I mean, Rhythm of War is a great example. It's like, okay, dude, oh, well, I'm, I'm absolutely I mean, wrecked, a... <laughs> and then the last chapter happens, and you're like, "Dude, I'm wrecked for eternity." Like, there's no. See, that was one no of his first bait and switches, which I'm not going to spoil. That was less world building. I mean, it still is. Where I feel like it'll end up turning into a world building thing, but yeah, it is more it's... of like the. It's more just like Which, a, I mean, he can't do it four times in a row. Risen, like, yeah, like man. can he? So I mean, you can't really blame him, but it's just yeah. At some I mean, point, it's like, okay, do we not know everything about something. the world? <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what God. more is there? But so yeah, Well of Ascension, we both loved it. Um, is there and anything if you need else one last reason, you say? Yeah, oh, yeah, you need one last reason to read this. There are monsters in this book that have such a cool like. Mm. He always finds some weird thing. The Coloss yeah. are in this, which, you know, read it and you'll find out like more in depth. But essentially these are humanoid s kind of things that mm -hmm. they get bigger. Their skin is saggy and they, as they get older, they never stop growing essentially. So they only die because their hearts explode. Is that right? Because they can't yeah, take it anymore. Like and so they, yeah. they get huge and then their skin like starts ripping because they don't have enough skin to, but anyway, they're just yeah. like savage. But they go beasts. from like five to 12 feet and they're like, yeah, they're, they're feet, savage. Yeah. Um, there's some crazy so, fan art of Colossus too that is like see, I haven't pretty, seen any. pretty crazy. Be curious, um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, if you need any more reason? Cool monsters. Yeah, 
We love cool monsters. So cool monster. let's get into spoilers here, brother. So I finished this about almost a week ago now. You just finished it today or yesterday. Um, so it's a little more fresh for you. But, uh, I mean, to jump into spoilers, how did this book start? Let's Let's start out with that. I mean, it ends with the Lord Ruler being killed and overthrown. It starts a year later, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And so we start year, out in Luthadel. Years, yeah. yeah. Start out in Luthadel. Ellen is king in Luthadel um, and king of the central dominance. The final empire, the whole world or whatever is pretty much like splintered into those dominances with different kings trying to get power. And he's got an army on his doorstep. It's his his daddy, Straff. Um, so that's pretty much where the book starts and you're kind of thrown into this situation. Like this is what we're dealing with. Like the good guys, like our team, Vin and Ellen are outnumbered as far as numbers. Um, they're basically being sieged at this point. So they're running out of supplies. Like they don't have the ATM reserve that they thought they were going to find. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. And he set up that old, like not parliament, but whatever you call that. Yeah, his assembly of like 23 yeah. <clears throat> representatives. Um, and you realize he doesn't, he's kind of not losing power, but he's kind of trusted these people with right. responsibility. And now, you know, things yeah. are not going to go. They're, you know, obviously they end up really not yeah. going how he wanted them to. But Right. And that's a key thing for Ellen's <clears throat> character development in this is he starts out as that scholar we met in the final empire that is basic is essentially just an idealist that wants like a utopia and everybody to be able to be represented and happy and, you know, no wars and that kind of thing, which is great. And you love his character for it, but um, it seems to be, it's starting to kind of grind up against like, you know, his goals and what he's trying to do. So that ends up being a major character arc for him throughout the book. Um, where does it have Vin starting? I mean, they're like in a relationship and she's just kind of, yeah, they sprinkle in around. like low. It's like super low key that he had asked her to marry him, or she, he had asked her, yeah, to marry him, and it makes you right. like assume maybe that he said no or she said no. And yes, then, yeah, that did happen. You know, that ends up becoming yeah. a whole arc. Which, dude, I'm really glad. I mean, this is definitely jumping, but dude, if we would have gotten like a a little love triangle between her, Zane, and Ellen, dude. I, I was yeah, not dude, I did down not for want that. that. Which, so I, mean, I was really Zane glad he wrapped that. that up. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm all game with him wanting something, but she was kind of yeah. being a little sketchy for a while. Yeah, and I was she was like, about I to swear to God, off. if this yeah. happens, dude, you, you're dead to me, Ben. Yeah, you you're can't do to that me. to Ellen. Because Zane is um, sick and all. He was a really cool character, but I yeah. just don't – I'm not into – I like Vin and his relationship, and I even loved – um like if we're talking rom, like normally I don't. I want to say I don't like romance, but I mean I loved that and I loved uh, Sazed and Twindle. I mean that was crushing, Tindle, dude. To yeah. see, yeah, Tyndall. Um, so I mean I do love some good romance. It's just for some reason the triangles are never. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I feel like it's triangles. just hard to they're do. They're overdone and and they're like it's hard really to do well too. Yeah. When it's hard to do it without you like having like a distaste for the whichever character is the one that both the other characters want to be with. You end up having a distaste because you're like, why are you like, just pick one. Like, and obviously you're usually going to have one you want them to pick, but either way you're like, stop doing this. Like it's not in fun the to wheel read. of time. There's a hard wow. one and I actually don't mind it. Well, I mean, if it's, it's actually written, not sure, even a triangle, sure it's, it's like, like a, anything. yeah. Is it more? It's one V three. Interesting. Our boys eat a lot of options. <laughs> eaten. Um, but so, no, I, mean, I didn't that mind moment. that, but I'm glad that didn't happen. But yeah, I think uh, she's just kind of overwatching, you know, yeah, she's trying to protect her. She gets she, attacked and yeah, and by it starts some assassins. Off, yeah, that's how it starts for sure. Yeah. And that's when you get runs out of her ATM. Zane. Yeah. She doesn't know who he is yet, but there's like a guy that's been watching her. She calls him the watcher until she learns that it's Zane. Um, I mean, he, I really am sad that he's dead. He was yeah, so he was a great character. Me. And the that thing just most... sucks, dude, that he's dead. Because he, he feel like he could be yeah. so interesting. Like, there's so much that could go on there. Dude, but especially dude, if Ellen would have died. If Ellen would have oh, died yeah. and he would still be alive, but, like, yeah. maybe he that got, like, wounded. Dude, that could have mm -hmm. gotten. that. See, I would have been game for that. That would have been yeah. a little different than a love triangle, but that would have been interesting. Yeah. But. 
the thing about Zane and we'll obviously we always do is we're going to start jumping around um, because getting closer to the end is the more like interesting crazy stuff there's a bunch of really good arcs that we'll discuss but while we're on Zane dude like he was really interesting throughout I loved like his POVs but the best thing about his character is right when you are introduced to him yeah he hears the voice that he refers to as God and you're like this dude's crazy or he's like you know there's an inkling that he could be hearing like an actual voice, but like he sees himself as insane. He acts insane. So you're like, all right, this dude's crazy. And at the end, right before he dies, that voice says to him, you know, what's the most ironic thing is you were never even insane. And you're like, oh, dude, Zane's been like just getting duped this whole time. It's sad, bro. It's sad. So what is that? I mean, who was Zane? That's what I'm saying. It's like that man could have been. I mean, he was definitely built different. I still don't really, yeah. and then this is, this is jumping, but did you buy how he got killed? Be honest. That she, like, basically used the ATM against him? Yeah, dude. That she He was relying, I guess, too much, too heavily on ATM, and he was blocking moves before she did them. And so I mean, she, I have to buy it, but it's... You know what I mean, though. It's honestly one of the weakest things. I it was still okay, but yeah, it's just I could see it on a Sanderson level, you know, because he is held to a higher standard. It was just like I feel like you could have come up with something a little better. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We're talking about a, yeah, the, this ATM, yeah. which is sick, and I love the idea of ATM, and that's why it's like, dude, how is she gonna win? Right. I just I don't know. It wasn't maybe it wasn't because you at, at first she talks to someone, maybe it's docs or ham about hey how do you beat someone with atm and so i thought we were going to get a little sprinkling in of like uh oh here's this move that maybe might work and then eventually like you know eventually she tries out and it does work but like it was just kind of out of nowhere that she figured it out i I don't know it just i wanted i needed a little bit more development for that to hit fully for me to be like oh wow yeah, and my assumption would be like just, I mean, there's obviously been a lot of allusions to, to her being like, you know, the most powerful Alamancer like in a really, really long time and just naturally like gifted with it. And then there was the whole thing where she somehow like sucked in the mists in order to kill the Lord Ruler, which See, shouldn't was, even have been possible. So that's what my like thought is that. it has something to do with her special thing. But I do agree with you. I don't like when there's too many moments where you almost kind of break the rules in order for yeah. your POV like protagonist to succeed against an antagonist. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I feel yeah. like there's an explanation we're not quite getting in how Vin I don't I don't know if I hope so, but that didn't that it just yet. didn't it wasn't laid out. If there would have been a missed element, then yeah, I would agree like okay, it's something we but it felt like oh she just in the moment thought let me faint right. and then do this. But it's like, I feel like ATM, doesn't that defy ATM? Yeah, I know in the thing, he did at least right. I will say that at the last minute he saw, like last right. second he saw something. But I just think, what the hell late, is yeah. the point of ATM? Like, I just yeah. don't, that's what I'm, and I was hoping that she was going to use um, that other metal, which I think she kind of tries to do. And then he has maybe some, but that's what I thought was going to happen. She was going to use some of the uh, Duralumin to First, do well, something she did remember she used it and then realized that he had it too so he yeah. used it to stop her coin shop but what i thought for a split second before she killed him the way she did what i was thinking was like okay vin's gonna have to take a major hit here like she's gonna have to let him like stab yeah. her get him off like focus and then like you know stab him in the throat or maybe try to wait out his atm you know until it extinguishes and take like a mortal wound that would possibly kill her so which yeah. I mean, she did take a lot of beatings throughout the book, so it's not like she's like a Mary Sue that can't get hurt or something. But I do agree that that moment was a little, if not, if you know, at least unexplained to this point as to how exactly she managed that outside because, of her just being super talented. Yeah. When I thought, which now that I'm remembering it, I, because she does the thing with um, the Chondra. I forget his actual name, but we thought it was. Um, it was you thought it was Orsur, but it's Tin Soon. Yeah, so she does the thing where she, and then he ends up kind of telling her some rules that really do end up mattering, obviously for the end. Which that's what right. made sense to me because he set that up with the conjure thing to where like the right. train of thought made sense. Whereas that's yeah. why this move didn't make that much sense to me because it wasn't like talked about before. But I feel like yeah. 
her using him in the moment could have given her an opening and i think it does for a second but even he's still like figured i don't know i just yeah. wish he would have done it just a little different i don't know i mean i, I don't hate it still yeah. but it was the weakest like kind of yeah. plot hole i've seen and again yeah. maybe he makes it up but i just don't i don't know i'm not like holding my disagree. breath on him making that one up or, yeah i wouldn't you know disagree I mean? um but to touch on something you just hit one of my favorite elements of this book was the relationship between Vin yeah. and Tin Soon, who you thought was or Sewer or Sewer, whatever his name I is. I hope he's back, which you, you're already deep into the third one, and I hope he comes yeah. back. I got I'm a good feeling. Anything. Um, but with the way but, he's been killing characters, you just don't know. Yeah, you never know. But I mean, I loved, I loved all that stuff. I thought I like it was re- like you got some world building from Tin Soon. You got, um, yeah, you and then did. just like the general, like the gradual. Like Vin starting to realize, oh, like he's like actually like a person like me and has like, you know, desires and like he like thinks for himself very progressive. and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, very progressive. Uh, but no, dude, I, I thought that was really well written and it was, you know, a fun. Does I that agree. count as a companion? Yeah, we were talking about companion? that. It was very close. I, it almost does feel like that because the Condra in general are very you don't want to say they're not people, but they aren't people. So oh, like, dude, they're not Wait till we read the next book. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, they play by different rules. So it is tough to like compare them on people standards because they just view the world so differently. So right. it is very close. I mean, yeah, him staying so dog that. form feels, <clears throat> feels very companion. Yes. Yeah, dude. I mean, you know me, bro. I just love dogs. So I'm sitting there thinking, dude, this is me. If I'm in this world and I see this as an opportunity, I'm like, oh yeah, a dog that I can talk to and still like, you know, hey, come here, bro. Come, Dude, I will say the struggles. whole rule that they can't hurt humans is crazy. Or kill. It was kill. Is crazy. Yeah. Like, is it crazy? Like, it makes sense because they're kind of trying to be controlled or whatever through the contract, right. but it's such a plot like element that really does make things like difficult because it's like, yeah stuff's going down like especially when um ellen's trying to do the whole like voting thing and then uh those those alamancers that were hired by venture you know try and step in and kill them and then you know there's like that whole battle going on and stuff's like really hitting the fan and he does step in but you know he says that if he would have mortally wounded him essentially that he would have had to turn himself in it's just just a right. cool element that he adds to where it's like, okay, in theory, this huge wolf should really be like an even cooler companion, but it's limited. Yeah. But it's so like it a limits it. It's like a necessary plot device because they would be such a problem, dude. Like just oh, being able yeah. to hide amongst you know any population they wanted to and then kill at will. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, oh, for sure. I, I loved all that stuff. The stuff with the Condra and all their conversations and that development of them too was great. Um, Which there's a couple elements that could be a problem that I'm still confused about. Like what? Dude, like Marsh, bro. What is going on with Marsh, dude? <laughs> and I feel like that's a huge thing about, I know you said the prologue in general of um, Hero of Ages is huge, but it's just like, dude, because I mean, all right, if we Bro, rewind. All I can tell you is you ain't wrong. Marsh is the problem. <laughs> Dude, I mean, they're Mistborns, bro, that are big. So it's like, and probably more powerful in ways. And so it's, <laughs> dude, if they would have had him, bro, I mean, it would have been no problem, bro. If he would have just come back with Sazed, because then all of a sudden Sazed's a problem as well. Like, I mean, I know it took yeah. him a decade to become a problem by storing stuff up, but, <laughs> I mean, the man went off. So, I mean, just yeah. then him and Marsh, I mean, dude. That would have yeah, been I mean, fine. Unstoppable. So, but, I mean, where was Marsh the whole time, dude? Where was he? And then he just shows up at the end. And then also, that's what I I couldn't tell, like, if I misread this, but I thought he was about to literally kill Sazed, and then all of a sudden Sazed gets away. I, I lost something there. Like, I missed. I tried to go back and find it because I was on the edge of my seat, and I just had to know what happened. So, like, I was confused about how he got away, but I, I just couldn't make myself go back because I just wanted to know, yeah. like, other things. Um, that gets explained though. I ca- I couldn't remember if it was at the end of this book or the. It must be the beginning of the third book. It gets explained why because they don't know where don't Marsh is because he didn't kill Marsh because obviously Marsh is in the next one and I think it says that in the yeah. pro or in the epilogue as well. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. There's just I mean, dude. Again, I I hate to just jump to the end, but I mean, what what did she release, bro? 
what did she release? Because, like, it's just, are you kidding me? It's like, as soon as you think you know what's going on, it's like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. this is the whole bad guy story, and they overtook right. the bad guy, but things are almost worse. It's like, it's that, that weird yeah. dichotomy of you take over a dictator, but then there's no structure, so it's just more chaos. The power vacuum. So people are that, technically yeah. free, but then they're getting killed because, yeah, there's no, no one right. to step up in power, and it's just that weird dichotomy. Yeah. And then it just the knife in it is all is just like wait was he a good guy was he like actually low key right. like withholding something that is yeah. like way worse yeah and my so like to build up to it I mean they have all these they have this logbook that they know now is Rashek and not Alindi's but you know they obviously don't fully understand it because towards the end of the book they start realizing that like certain writings are getting like erased or like removed and things are being changed torn out all this stuff so but the build to the well of ascension is like from that logbook and a hero of ages concept and Vin believing that like because of all these things that are happening in her life that parallel the hero of ages she's like okay i like i must be this hero of ages and i've got to go to the well of ascension so then to get to to lay out that scene they get to the well of ascension. She realizes after they've already left Luthadel um, to go to Terrace, they realize like from the thumping. And then I think there was another development. I think it was the mist spirit coming to Ellen. They realize that like, we have to go back. The well is actually at Luthadel. And Vin's like, I don't understand how I know this, but I know it. <clears throat> so she goes back, goes down and finds it. Uses. Well, then also to, like, Ellen finally, or not Ellen. It's what's his face. Uh, spook or whatever his name is admits that he knows that oh, basically yeah. they're getting savage and then that was also the icing right. on the cake for Vin to be like well i have to go back yeah which before we even get to that the whole i felt i definitely felt the emotions in Vin's trip back to luthadel like her swinging through the air using alamancy and like crying like assuming that they're all going to be yeah. dead when she gets there i was like bro Vin's hurt right now so she gets there gets to the well of ascension when they walk in, there's like this cracked, like there's this like cracked vase or something. I forget how she describes it, but there's like these pebbles or something or nuggets of something. And she sees the well of ascension, lets it go. But like before she lets it go, like she gets in it or like before she even gets in it, sorry, the mist spirit shows up. Ellen walks over to it because he thinks it's friendly and the mist spirit like stabs him or like cuts his gut open. And so Vin is like the only like thing I can do is get in the well, like I can't heal him otherwise so she gets in the well feels all of this power like realizes that she could save ellen but she's like no like i have to release it. the hero of ages has to release it to defeat the deepness and defeat the mists or whatever um and so she lets it go and then right as she does that like she realizes she messed up and then right as so like this is like almost the end of the book page like 750 in mine <clears throat> She says, like, she's let it go. The cavern immediately began to shake. Vin cried out as the flaring power within her was ripped away, soaked up greedily by the void. She screamed, her glow fading, then fell into the now empty pool, head knocking against the rocks. The cavern continued to shake, dust and chips falling from the ceiling, and then in a moment of surreal clarity, Vin heard a single distinct sentence ring in her mind, I am free. And then the next epigraph you get is a part of Quan, the terrorist man's uh, steel a uh, message that he left that's written in steel and can't be changed. The last you haven't gotten this part of it yet because he just gives you sn- random snippets. The epigraph right after that chapter is for he must not be allowed to release the thing that is in prison there, referring to the well of ascension. And you're just like, bro, this whole book has been building up to this moment, and we right when it happens, you find out it's not good. It's not yeah. a good thing. <laughs> it's not. Um, I just still don't. So that was epic, dude. I like hopped up out of my thing. chair. Oh yeah, it's like what? When it as soon as they said I'm free, I'm like, all right, they messed up. They it's they Odium Junior. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> like, who is this? It's not someone that can easily be overtaken for sure. It's someone that's a problem. And so all but, I can say, because I don't want it, I don't want it to be, I don't want to spoil it. But I guessed, and I put you can you can see it in my reaction video that I made right when I finished it before I started reading the third one. I made that video and I guessed correctly what the thing was that she released. And it's been mentioned. It was mentioned in the book by Tim Soon at one point. 
but I don't want to like say it and ruin it for you or the viewer that hasn't read the book yet. But yeah, I audible too much of this book, dude. I, I really don't want to have to audible this next one. I feel like I am just to catch up, but I enjoy audible, but I mean, I already retain like, it's just so easy for things to slip away from me. So whenever I don't physically read it too, there's parts that are awesome. Like I, I audible actually the, like the last chapter and the pro or uh-huh. in the epilogue. And dude, it was actually really good. Like the, like him, just the voice, the Kramer guy is solid. Um, and He's him so doing good, the, man. like I am free or whatever was, it was cool. Yeah. Like the way he did it. Um, yeah, Cause I, I audible probably like 25, 30% of this book, if not more. Yeah, I audibled at least 50. Maybe it's the first more. fantasy I've ever audibled, um, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, he's a great narrator. But, no, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see, explain and break down how it's not plot armor that Ellen's alive. What is it that she puts in his mouth that causes him to now be a full-blown Mistborn? Where do they get more I mean, of that? Because they need to start <laughs> feeding that to all the boys. More. They need they need a good ten piece McNugget of those boys. Oh, yeah, dude. For the squad, um, it it it, it tells you in the next book. I don't oh, want to ruin okay. it for you, but it's explained. okay. So, but is it finite? It better be finite, because I mean, yeah, okay. It's not about to be like where you get a shard, do, do, you you do, you, do you remember what you said to me? I don't remember if it was on a video or just us talking. Oh. But before I had read either Oathbringer or Rhythm of War, you were like, I said something along the lines of uh. I was like, boy, like you other wait people getting seconds, sprint, dude. and you were like, bro, everybody getting sprint. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's like, a can't wait to just get a, an actual so. shard blade. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, boy, if you have to wait in seconds, you did, bro. You did. You did. Um, and now it's like, bro, if you only got one alimantic mm. metal you can burn, you did. <laughs> yeah, um, you ain't said that fourth no. ideal, boy. You did. So. But yeah, it, it does get explained, and it's a good explanation, and it makes for actually a really cool dynamic in the third book, so um, you'll okay. like it. But yeah, so I mean, basically this entire book, man, builds to a bad thing happening, which, you know, who I have no idea how this series ends. I haven't spoiled it for myself on Reddit or anything, but I'm starting to I'm starting to see how we might have been confused when we we were referring to Brandon calling the Mistborn series like saying that it sprung from an idea of what if like the dark Lord or the the bad person, like the bad guy won. And that was like the inspiration for Mistborn. And we initially thought, Oh, that's the Lord ruler. Like it starts out on that premise, but now I'm starting to wonder maybe it ends on that premise too. Like maybe all the good guys are going to lose. I don't know. And that's not a spoiler for the third book either. That's just like the vibe I got from the second book. Um, I mean, he, he feels like he's killed more characters in this series I mean, dude, I just don't, it's just like, there's like two big deaths in, well, I guess three in the Stormlight Archive. So, I mean, whereas in this one, dude, I mean, multiple main people die in this Mm -hmm. one. Obviously, literally the main character, I thought, I mean, obviously some would point to Vin, but I mean, died in the first one. So, I mean, the man is fearless right now. Yeah, and this one, a lot of people get killed in this one, like good and oh, bad dude, guys. Especially I at mean, the end, dude. I mean, you yeah, lose Zane. Zane kills Straff. Straff. Zane. Um, I mean, clubs literally, dies, Clubs, uh, Dachshund dies. Dachshund, dude. Twin, like, uh, Tyndall dies. Tind- Tyndall dies. Tyndall dies. Um, dies. You don't even see her, bro. Says it just freaking finds, finds her body, her. and it's like, wow, dude. So Poor really, Sazed. also, says it died in, inside. Um, Poor guy. Who else? I feel like Poor someone guy. else died maybe um, i mean but anyway ellen kills jasties which is like yeah. a really one of the best scenes in the book dude just is like is a good all right dude that's what you did and just chops his head off Sweet. um which dude ellen dude what i mean just great character development dude the whole part a... three was called king and i thought for sure oh this is gonna be a really good part with some tension and like good development but it's gonna end i literally was 100 percent sure it would end with ellen being king and it did not <laughs> Freaking he emperor, bro. I mean, what name is Penrod? Penrod? Can Ligma, dude. I mean, seriously, all the way to the bank. It's just like, what in the world? He he is not it. But um, what else was I gonna say? He he's like a great value, Adeline. Who, Ellen? Yeah, 
which is not like a shot. Like that's not like an insult. I don't yeah. think. I mean, I do better than Great Value. He's like a Publix brand. He's Publix Adeline. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's not Adeline, but he's at least Publix. Publix like is good. Like I'll take Publix. Is he brand. a Kirkland's brand? I'm not familiar with Kirkland. That's Costco's brand of stuff. Oh. It's pretty high quality, honestly. Like Kirkland's I mean, golf yeah. balls are nice. Their vodka, apparently, Tyler swears that it's Tito's. Like, he swears that it's distilled in the same place, but obviously it's like a third of the price. Mm. But a lot of people, you know, Kirkland's, they, like, make all their own stuff. But, yeah, it's the Costco brand. But anyway, I just yeah, see a I mean, lot he's of no He's just but... high. He's high integrity, though. Yeah, super high integrity. Like, you can't not love him. Um, so, yeah, he was great. And, like, you appreciate, like, the idealist that he starts out as, but it's just, like, Sanderson writes so well his development from being a pure idealist that wants to only pursue idealistic, you know, endeavors to understanding that in a time of, you know, despair and need, you know, you sometimes do have to make different, you know, decisions outside of that idealism. Um, yeah. So that was great am, for me. I am getting tired of him killing the most interesting characters, though. Yeah, I mean, Zane was definitely the big one in this Dude, book. Zane dies. Kelsey was... was interesting to me. He dies. Zane dies. And then, I mean, is it Twindle or Tindle? It's Tindwill. Tindwill? God, I hate yeah. that so much. But anyway, she was so fascinating to me. <laughs> yeah, I like her. And I was her. pissed that she died. Yeah. Um, huge less huge like part of Ellen's factor, development. But, yeah, I'm really glad that Marsh has not died yet. I had to feel like he will die. Mm. But I want more from him for sure next book yeah him and because i'm trying to think of who has more like i feel like there's gonna have to be some new characters that show up can you confirm or deny that there's new characters that are gonna be important uh yeah there are that have not been mentioned like maybe they've been referred like hinted like the, at. yes well, yeah there's some are. that have been like hinted at i can't say that there's one that's seems to be zane level new character but you're mm -hmm. also getting to further development of other characters so dude the third book i we won't talk about it long because this is not for this video but dude it's even better that's all i'm gonna say um but yeah man i'm trying to think of what else specifically happened there was a whole thing with breeze and orianne I was at like, first i really didn't like her character and then towards the end when she actually is an alamancer and you realize she's kind of playing a game yeah i respected that a lot more and so I, I liked yeah. her a lot more for that. Um, right. Breeze has a little arc in this too, where you kind of figure out mm -hmm. that he's not even Ska. Yeah, he's like technically straight nobility who's noble. pretending yeah. to be Ska. Yeah. Um, which is that was pretty wild. wild. But yeah, yeah you kind of wild. see some of his intentions mm -hmm. that he hides really well, that he's actually a really good guy. But then you right. do feel yeah. horrible for him at the end. Where he just yeah. kind of breaks, and he's just not, I mean, he's not a warrior guy, and he tries to be. And... Yeah. He pulls a Kaladin and just freezes up mid-battle when he sees somebody die. But like, is this... At least not everybody's counting on him right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, no one was counting on him for the sword. But did I make this up, or were they making it up when they were like, oh, yeah, like, he went to hide or whatever, but, like, we could still feel his... Like, there's, like, a little blurb about, like, even though he shut down, like, I think he was still like using his alemannic powers to like increase morale. He might have been. I don't specifically remember that line, but cuz someone's like where was he? And they're like, "Oh, we saw him run away over here." It's like some other guy who's like irrelevant who's telling, I want to say maybe Ham is the one who finds him or someone. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. I don't and, specifically um, remember that, but you know, It's like an offhand comment it. of like, "Yeah, I mean, he he went over here like to get out of like harm's way, but like we could still like feel him encouraging us or it was something like that that makes you think, oh man, like he he. It's almost like a, oh he doesn't give himself enough credit, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but I can see that. I can see where he's probably going to be down bad at least for the first good bit of this next book. Dude, I I'd mean, be shocked if that. I can man... see how everybody's going to be down bad. <laughs> Dude, I mean, Club's death was out of nowhere and low key unnecessary. I mean, it was, it was just, violent, bro. He like got chopped in half, basically. Dude, in literally sure. one second he's good, and then the next second he's not. Good. The next second, there was dead. no progression, dude. It was him talking to him, dude. literally being, I think, cut in half or whatever. It That's was. that it was thin like, line <laughs> between life and death, right there. <laughs> that was the thinnest of all lines. And but then dude, I will say, it speaking was, of, sorry, go. sorry, there you go, you go. 
Well, I was just going to say, this is kind of a topic change, so I don't know if you were still on that, but, dude, that scene, bro, where it's right after that happens, where Vin shows up, dude, after jumping with horseshoes for however long, bro, that was such a good scene, when she picks, starts picking up Kolos, Kolos Blades oh, yeah, and, and starts sort of fighting. Dominating. Yeah. I mean, just absolutely dominates. Sazed's scene where he fights. Sazed's where he picks up the sick. gate, I liked more. Yeah, that was sick. That when was hard, up the gate, dude. like basically re-shut it that was sick yeah and he's just holding he's like making himself super heavy to hold i mean yeah there that whole scene with yeah. says that i mean he's uh, i mean he's the best character in this series to me i mean he really? just is he's so interesting yeah and the way he's respectful yet like somehow still seen as like defiant in his you know community right, yeah but at the same time he's the one who's freed them it's just he's such a weird dichotomy of like respectful but like a rebel it's just a weird right. dichotomy, and he, he's so interesting. Yeah. Like, his powers are interesting. Um, yeah. His motivations are interesting. And then, I mean, it, it seems to have gotten even more interesting now with as soon as you think you figure him out, I mean, he's kind of lost. It seems like at least where it ends, you know, he's lost hope. <clears throat> and he's been always the guy who, you know. Yeah. It's all the guy on. right in front of him. I mean, that, that's what That'll I was going to say. That was man. disrespectful what Brandon Sanderson did to her. <laughs> An yeah, off-page death, the way she died, yeah, dude, he freaking was so her. disrespectful. Yeah, he did Eshenai. Like, dang, did you like not like this character you wrote? <laughs> like, yeah, let's get rid of her. Let's play, let's really build up a order. super interesting character and then just kill her. It does page. feel like though that he is like in this series way more than in Stormlight. Like, once a character has lost any of its like value to add to the story for whatever reason, Sanderson's like, you're dead. Yeah. If you don't bring a specific important role to the table, like Tenzel, you did your do- your job. I mean, Osur, Ellen's, Ellen's good to go. You're Osur done. died and we didn't even know he died. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean, got freaking, killed and we freaking, didn't learn about uh, it for a long time. Uh, what was it? Uh, Renault. <laughs> I mean, just Old grinded Renault. so hard in the final empire, empire and, empire. you know, did, you know, held true to all of Kelsier's last wishes and then just dies off page. And you don't find out until about 700 pages later <laughs> you're like yep. what yep, yep, which yep. just throws you for a loop because you're like oh so all this character development has been with Tin soon who like didn't actually experience the stuff from the final empire with vin so like it just just really throws whole, you for a loop. i am man. interested it seems like you you didn't say it but you hinted at it almost it's one of your answers but to figure out what i mean what are these contracts and who's giving them out and i know they have like an assembly or whatever where you have to get a new one but how does that work? So I'm interested to figure out more about that in the next book. Yeah. Because why did Zane have a contract with him? You know, like, you know, it's just those kinds of yeah. things I want to know. Which to like go more yep. on the Zane trail, um, did you see it coming that, you know, it kind of makes you think that he's been poisoning his dad the whole time to like test him? And then really he like wasn't. It was his, uh, his aide was like oh, giving him, you yeah. know what I mean, or whatever. Yeah, it was that, that girl, girl the whole time? Well, well, yeah, and Zane knew about it, but um, yeah, that was crazy. That was wild. He, she was literally giving him a like a disease, like yeah. infecting him with something more permanent than just like a a poison that kills you once you take it. Which did she die? Does he kill yeah, her? He, he kills, kills her. her. He kills her. Or maybe her. she yeah. runs off. No, he, he kills, kills her. her. Yeah, he for sure kills her. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. And then he barely figures out like what it was that he was giving her that was like a poison, but he needed so that he wouldn't have withdrawals that would kill him or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that was I can't an remember did, little arc. You didn't watch it Game of Thrones, did you or did you? Did you or did you, L O L? No, I've read the first book, but I think I've watched a couple episodes of the first season, but Well, from it. the show, dude, I just for some reason the whole time every time Straff was in the picture, I was picturing Tywin Lannister from the show. The, like the that short was guy? No, that's Tyrion. that's Tyrion. Tywin is his dad. It's like Jamie and Cersei's dad, Tywin. Um, just that actor, I just pictured as Straff for some reason. I and just the way he acted, I was like, man, that's Tywin Lannister. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, man, Zane was like a really interesting part. Um, uh oh, I just didn't think he was crazy, bro. What? Oh, I thought you were. No, I mean, I was going to like, get any your thought. No, I mean, I'm just like, yeah, bro, he was literally the coolest. And I'm like, yeah, because he wasn't insane. I never thought he was insane. 
not once and i think he was saying it because all of his like his logic was definitely skewed and he was being facetious most of the time but i mean he never like made comments where i'm like i mean the whole god thing was the only thing but it was just the way he even controlled that i feel like proved that he wasn't insane because it's not like he was just killing people like he wasn't yeah, reckless he ignored, killing people. Yeah, he ignored the voice telling him to kill constantly. Like every time. Literally every time. Yeah, so it's like much every time. And then he came up with this like really in depth plan to try and trick Vin into, you know, thinking all these things about Ellen and maybe trying to follow him. You know, I mean yeah. I just Yeah. I mean it was I was in. I was in all the way yeah. with learning more about him, and then now, yeah, I mean, he's gone, and that's just like, yeah. wow. And that, he made I mean, Straff such a more dynamic character, too, wow, because dude, you just saw yeah. Straff as, like, this all-powerful, like, not scared of anything, but then once you start getting Straff POVs, you realize Straff kind of, like, has a leash on this guy, but, like, not a tight one, and he's kind of worried that at some point it's going to bite him in the ass. Um, so it just makes Straff even more interesting. Their whole dynamic was really cool like you said with zane like constantly poisoning him it was just uh yeah it was just really well really well done and i enjoyed it i mean all the Sad characters scene, were yeah. just so intrig- intriguing yeah r.i.p zane dude uh, they need a um they need to get a uh what's uh duncan idaho a um a gola yeah they need to get a little zane goal up in there mm-mm-mm because man i just that's tough to see him go but yeah so, I mean, i'm excited to see what are goes. your thoughts like and i can't really answer this so i just want to ask you we like know. yeah yeah where i think well, it's some going. of it yeah like where like what do you yeah if you had to guess like what do you think's going on dude what i wouldn't mind seeing actually is say zed being a problem like low-key mm-hmm. if say zed were to become a villain like have a slight villain arc mm. that isn't like I, I hope that he ends up becoming a slight antagonist. I don't know if that's going to happen. Mm. Um, and maybe he's just more of a gray area protagonist to where he doesn't necessarily help. It seems like Marsh is going to be whatever the hell Marsh is going on. Definitely seems like antagonist vibes, which I don't understand. Mm. But if I had to guess what's going to happen, the the teller people or uh what are they called that they meet out there and um you know what i'm talking about like the keepers they're gonna the pull up my guess they're pulling up then there's gonna be some assembly like basically i think all the creatures in the land we're right have a noah's ark moment where everybody's coming in we're gonna have an all come to jesus circle time and for that Avengers in, Infinity War moment. Yeah. And we're all going to be like, all right, what's going on? Like something just got released and the, the miss is still killing people. So I'm just assuming everyone's going to kind of come in. Um, it seems like Vin's got control of the Coloss. So I'm assuming that's going to continue maybe. I don't know. But I feel like there's like a secret right. faction out there that we just don't know about. Like that mm-hmm. maybe he's been hinted at. But I mean, what's his face has mm-hmm. an agenda so marsh and so there's clearly some inquisitors yeah. out there because they literally massacred the the senate or whatever right. for the the, the sign the calls the or the people, yeah. yeah so they're so, doing something somewhere so yeah i you know um, i'm assuming they're gonna do have something going on and maybe whoever got released is gonna partner with them i don't know i mean you yeah i wonder if it is you know some sort of spirit with the the mist I, I don't know man i feel like it maybe has something to do with the um the chondra i don't know i mean the chondra but they said that the chondra and the the coloss are cousins which i don't understand that dynamic fully mm. and it, it made it right. seem like they were created by something mm. so i wonder if the thing that got released maybe is the thing that created them mm. so but i, I don't know because i guess she had control over them before this yeah. thing got released so but it does fast forward a little bit right afterwards i think the pro or the epilogue so it didn't seem to be in uh, chaos i think so i'm just trying to yeah. think like oh did she lose control of the coloss after this thing was released which i don't right. think that was the case so right i don't know yeah, so I, there's a faction that i don't know about yet obviously 
Because yeah, I don't really know um, who the bad guy is right now, other than the thing that was released in March. So I want to ask you, and before you answer, my, my question is going to be what you think was released at the Well of, this, of Ascension. But I, before you answer, I can give you a hint. And this is a spoiler for book three, but it's not a huge spoiler because you get it right at the beginning, and it's already been mentioned in book two. You just may not necessarily you – don't, you don't quite have the means to put the two together, I don't think. But do you – it's it Cosmere level sometime? stuff. Yeah, so this is, is definitely it, a spoiler for book three. Is it but yes. cultivation or is it like a cultivation level type of thing or is this like an unmade? Yes. No. It's cultivation? It's no, it's not cultivation. But the, it's because cultivation like and honor cultivation. and Odin. Yeah, they're bound to Roshar. In, yeah, they're all bound to Roshar. So there's, yeah. So, and but these, it's something that we've heard of before? Yes. Tensu mentioned the, it when he was talking the, to Vin. Hmm. And he mentioned about, like, actually, world. yeah, like he says, you are of blank and I am of blank. So it's a line in the book. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to tell you because it's not a spoiler because it's as you've already read it. But he says to Vin, it's when they're talking about what the Chandra Dude, what like a religion bad time is. To lag. Wait, you remember that? Sorry, I lost you for a second. It's Fred. Yeah, dude, that was, you such, the that was literally a horrible time to lag. All right, so you, yeah, restart that. You said the Condra religion? Yeah, so that's the scene where Vin is asking him if Condra have a religion, and he's like, you know, I don't really want to tell you, but then they start talking about it, and he basically says, like, they, like, uh, you know, prophesy a world where humanity is gone, and he explains it's not from us killing y'all because we can't do that. It's from y'all killing yourselves. You're actually prophesied to destroy the world. After all, you are of ruin and we are of preservation. So he drops that line in there and then there's nothing else. Um, so that being said, the Well of Ascension released something that has to do with one of those shards. Actually, something that has to do with both of them. Interesting. So that means that... And that's so really not a spoiler. You find that out immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the third book. I mean, it's a spoiler if you didn't want to read it. literally yet, still means nothing to me. So, yeah, it still doesn't. It doesn't yeah, spoil I mean, anything these are just in the grand titles that I uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it doesn't seem that it it like it doesn't function the same way that like shards do, seemingly. Like I mean, I'm not gonna say anything else. It's a different thing. Yeah. We're not just about to get like an honor cultivation thing. Um it's very interesting, dude. I just love this Cosmere thing he's built, dude. It's so interesting. Um, but yeah, ruin. So, but it and looks like we're gonna get the two, the two main. He's setting up the two main big daddies for this world, essentially. Yes. For the next series, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah, or, or maybe for just the end of this, I don't know. Um, but yeah, and I just realized we haven't, and I guess it's because they just don't even know that they are a planet and that there's other planets, but. They haven't mentioned the planet name being Skadriel or Skardriel, whatever it is. Yeah, I was I was going to say the same. I, I didn't even know what it was. Like, and dude, another thing. We talked about this on the phone today, bro. Absolutely not a single mention of Hoyd. No, Wit is gone. Gone. And I thought he was like a big part of this series. I don't know why I thought that. I clearly was wrong. But yeah. for some reason, I had picked that up somewhere that he was a big part of this. Maybe it's the second era or maybe it's something in book three, but... I didn't realize it until I was done with it. I was like, well, yo, where was my boy? Wit, Wit didn't even get a mention. No stories told. I mean, just, what the he was killed that? in the Skull Rebellion. <laughs> he gone? I guess. I mean, I don't know. Old Cafandrius, man. I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, but I, I am curious to see more about... It does feel very isolated right now. I know we're introducing some other elements like the Coloss and like you know, like the keepers and whatnot, but because I feel like there's a lot more going on. I know set ends up playing Ashweather set plays a a little role, obviously, and he's from kind of somewhere else, but I'm definitely ready to start spreading my wings and flying around this world because it Mm. feels very isolated still to me. Like the world building itself is very deep, but I don't know. I feel like I'm, you know, 20 feet deep, but like five feet wide right now. Whereas I'm trying to get 20 by 20. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like I know a lot about Luthadel, but I know nothing about anywhere else. It feels like nothing else exists right now. 
is right. like when you go out yeah. of Luthado when they're running around, it feels like Mad Max like type of vibes. And yeah. they're like, oh wait, other people <laughs> still live around here. So you know, kind of interested to see some other big cities and big players, which I don't I mean that maybe isn't gonna happen here, but I guess we'll have to find out. We'll find out. Is there anything we left out that happened in this book? I'm trying to think. Um I mean the whole move by set it's kind of interesting, oh, yeah. but then it gets overplayed it by, I mean, it gets overshadowed by uh, Venture yeah. and Zane's move. Um, mm-hmm. That political stuff was, you know, decently interesting to me. Yeah, I thought um, so too. But, yeah, I definitely liked more of the Vin with uh, Tinsu or whatever's name. Um, come to find out, I like that arc a little more during that time, yeah. and then I'll, I like the the uh, Ellen with what's her face arc where he's kind of learned to be a king. I like that arc. Yep, for sure. So, only other things is you know he recklessly goes into um, his dad's camp and then kind of does some cool, you know, mental maneuvering with Vin. That was right. like a cool moment where she kind of blasts him with the soothing. Yeah. Kind of sh- like flexes a little bit because, you know, he goes right. in and tries to play the weak card and it doesn't work. And then, you know, it's kind of, it was just kind of like the first stepping stone for Ellen, kind of, you yeah. know, taking charge and kind of showing his dad that he can't just be pushed around. So, right. Oh, that scene was great too. Yeah. With Finn doing all that. That was, yeah. That was a really good scene. I don't think of any other out. moments though. Well, there was, we've talked about it, but not like in depth. Says it in Tindwell, like, finding out that they you know basically love each other but it's a very dynamic kind of thing he's a eunuch and she's born 20 children so like you know she's not really looking for that kind of love like it's like a very i mean uh, talk about a yin yang yeah it's very yeah it's a good way to sum it up essentially um so that was nice made it hurt even more um and then there's oh the whole church of the survivor thing we hadn't talked yeah. about the whole religion being built around Kelsier and that's such I love that kind of stuff seeing like a character that you know well enough from other either books or previous chapters or whatever being turned into the like the center of a religion and seeing how that gets distorted and interpreted differently and like what it leads to like the consequences of that because you know who knows what's going to happen you know he had like a goal but then it was like well what happens after that you know, yeah. Um, um, and now Ellen's committed to it, so there's that. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, I don't think we ever really actually talked about it because then we talked about it off, off the pod. But um, that basically the whole time you think it's you're trying to figure out who is the other Chandra, and then you find out that. Oh yeah, you know, true. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I know we've talked about him, the Osir getting killed, but we didn't, like, really talk about why that even mattered. And that's because right. she kind of thinks yeah. all these other people maybe are him, and then the real switcheroo yeah. was, like, her conjure was the conjure, which is, like... It's like, wow, what inception yeah. we have here. Yeah, that was Which I didn't crazy. see. That one got me. No, that totally, I mean, didn't even consider it. No, didn't even not even it. once. No. So... Which he hid that one kind of in a way where low key, there's no way we could have known. Yeah, so, it would have been tough for me. Which to I was, I didn't up. mind though. I don't, I didn't feel cheated no. by that one. Like I, I no, not it. at all. It was clever. It was really clever. I liked it too. It just made it just so, added to the to the dynamic of it. But so yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I love this book. Like I said, man, the third one's even better so far. I'm probably about not quite halfway through it, but getting close. So. I'm excited I can't wait to for us to finish read. this trilogy. Yeah, I can't wait for us to read the last one here, and then whenever we do finish the next four, and then to go back and like tier list all the Sanderson books mm. we've ever read. Yeah, I can't like, wait rank for them that. in order. That's that, fun, that yeah. gets wild, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I'm trying to fun. think about that. Um, oh. We got a lot. We still got a lot to read, so we're we're making our way downtown though. Yes, sir. We are. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Do you have anything else for this uh, episode of the pod? For our no, millions and billions and trillions of listeners? Yeah, I mean, if for some reason you're still watching, literally comment. That's all we're asking. <laughs> literally anything about this book. 
just anything that's Cosme related, comment it and like this video and subscribe. Please. Literally, please. please. Our so, lives depend on it. That was me just you right there. You're watching like someone is actually watching this right now if they're hearing this. So it's like the whole mm-hmm. like if a tree falls in a whatever, no one's there to hear it. Did it make a sound? Well, like you're here, so the sound's being made. So like literally, we are talking to you. You're like questioning, are are they talking to me right now? And yes, we are actually talking to you. Like comment <laughs> something and then like it and then subscribe because it costs you zero. Cost it costs you, you zero. Come on. Do one for the team. Um, all right, be on the lookout. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Um, we're obviously going to finish this trilogy. We're going to finish Napoleon and the rise and fall of the Third Reich. Uh, and then we're going to jump into some other stuff towards the end of the year, beginning of next. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, comment, rate and review if you're listening on podcasts or Spotify. Um, and we will see you in the next one. Peace Bye. be upon you. Bye.